Hello. Just back from Transformers 4 Age of Extinction. Uh, so this is going to be my initial first reaction thoughts to the film. Uh, which I went to see wearing my Dalek t-shirt. Uh, keep it with my screen name. Of Inflatable Dalek. I'm nothing if not completely dedicated to the theme of my on screen name. Uh, this is just going to be initial thoughts. Uh, throw together fairly quickly, even by my standards. I could well change my opinions if you see me in six months saying something completely different. Uh, don't hold it against me. Uh, but this is sort of half an hour after getting back from screening. And generally very impressed. Uh, this is a film that's been critically quite slagged off. Uh, the diehard Transformers fans generally don't like uh, any of the Michael Bay films anyway. Uh, yet they become this unstoppable, powerful uh, juggernaut. Uh, you, you sort of expect the fans of a long running franchise to not necessarily embrace the latest reinvention of it. Uh, don't get me bad about that. Uh, but if you've been brought into something because you like a certain style, and then uh, a new iteration of it comes along with something very different, uh, you probably are, are going to like it. It's not just sort of. Uh, be the stuck of a past uh, sort of funny duddy. But uh, generally, the fan reaction, the critical reaction, completely different from that of the general public who absolutely love these films. Uh, I guess there is something very. Uh, that was a sort of word. Uh, but something really connects with the general public in the idea of giant robots beating the crap out of each other for two and a half hours. Uh, of, of the films in general, really enjoying the first Michael Bay one. Uh, Revenge of the Fallen, I think, is the weakest of the four, but it does have the best scene out of all of them in the forest fight, which is just awesome. I'll take you all on! That, that is Optimus Prime to perfection, that scene is. Uh, Dark Moon was okay. This one, I would say, still isn't as good as the first one, but it's marginally better. Uh, then the last two, it's uh, got a nice basic idea with uh, the humans wanting to hunt down Transformers bodies basically for their special space metal. Uh, Lockdown, who's uh, the main and pretty much the only, uh, well, I'm going to say Decepticon, though he doesn't seem to be particularly aligned uh, to anybody. Uh, he's uh, the main robot villain. He might not actually even be a Cybertronian. Uh, that is a sort of vague implication of the film. Uh, Pete's quite good as a bounty hunter character who simply wants to uh, capture, well not, not all the Transformers, just the Knights. Uh, and take them back to the creators of the Transformers, which is uh, a bit of a seed for another sequel laid there. Uh, what's nice also actually is that the uh, lockdown of humans they're in partnership, they don't like each other, but they don't betray each other. They each fulfil their side of a the bargain. There's no, uh, and now I have what I want, I will turn on you style moments. Uh, which, uh, similar to Dark of the Moon, where uh, Megatron did turn on the rich human git, as I believe he was called. Uh, in fact, maybe he gave him what he wanted. So it's, sort of, it's always nice to see that... Uh, People can make deals, even if they're bad guys in movies, rather than to come into the uh, cliches. Uh, so there's a, a sort of nice, solid, very transformative plot there. Uh, the opening stuff with a uh, damage, bitter, even by movie Prime standards, he is pissed off at this one, but understandably. Uh, Prime being rescued and uh, helped by Marky Mark. You don't know if he really cares what the character is called in his Marky Mark. All that stuff's nicely done. Uh, there's a good sense of escalation to the action scenes. Uh, Kelsey Grammer's very good. Uh, he sort of hams it up a bit, but there's also a real sense of uh, suppressed range in his performance of inadequacies in his own life. It actually make him uh, quite terrifying in places. Uh, this film's rich, powerful git. Uh, as he's also called, is uh, sort of basically replaced with the Simmons. He starts off as a bad guy, but learns the error of his ways by the end of the film. Uh, it's nice to see Beijing getting destroyed for once, instead of London, which seems to be the main location for Hollywood films to do that sort of thing to lately. 
Uh, all the new Autobots are very good. John Goodwin gets the most to do out of any of them, really. Uh, when he, uh, playing Cup. Ah, uh, sorry. H Hound. Uh, it's basically IDW Cup. Uh, but hey, he's got a beard as well. Uh, the, the other new Autobots, they're okay. There is uh, one of the flaws of the film. I think the Autobots, there is too much infighting amongst them. Uh, they do come across as being completely and utterly useless in every way without Optimus Prime. Uh, which is one of the flaws of the original cartoon uh, as well. Uh, sort of Optimus Prime is awesome and he is the best, of course. But it's sort of, it's sort of that James Bond thing, uh, which has tended to happen in the last few Bond films, where rather than Bond be the best because he's really good... Bond is the best because everyone else who works at MI6 is shit. And you have a sort of feeling with uh, Prime here, but if he wasn't there, they would just be sitting around killing each other. And there's not any real sense why they're all so pissed off at each other either. Uh, if they'd actually used Griff's backstory, uh, which as the Titan comic has uh, used it, I'm assuming is similar. They would have a production bible, they have the characters, I'm assuming his backstory is similar to that for the IDW version. Uh, if it is idea of him being the next Decepticon, uh, maybe even one from Dark of the, who survived Dark of the Moon and has had to team up with the Autobots because they're all being hunted together, yeah, that could have been a source of tension, but uh, maybe they're just squabbling like petulant children for no reason. Uh, I think that's a bit of a shame. Uh, but yeah, generally, all good. Uh, the rest of the Decepticons, maybe, it's a slightly... One side of show, in fact, there's about five or six Autobots, so there'll be two named Decepticons, one of whom doesn't come alive till close to the end of the film. Uh, Megatron is back, calling himself Galvatron. Can't say dead. Uh, it's sort of a nice idea. It owes a lot to Transformers anime, I believe. Uh, I've never really seen that show, but uh, that's a few claims I've uh, seen said. Uh, uh, Frank Wilker is playing him now. Uh, I was, didn't used to be a, much of a Frank Wilker bad as Megatron, or was more of a David K person, but his performance in, in Transformers Prime has converted me, so it's a, it's a bit of a shame he, like Hugo even was, he's basically wasted here we are still waiting for a film that has a decent size role for Megatron stroke Galvatron uh, but yeah generally pretty solid film lots of fun some nice jokes. Uh, my favourite just been uh, Drift's reaction to Dinobots when uh, he sees him transform and he goes, I was expecting a giant car. Uh, yeah, that's all good. The Dinobots are fantastic. In fact, they're probably the highlights of the films. That's sort of what the problem here is that the 2007 Transformers film did set an effect standard. Uh, probably one a lot of people would rather, would rather it hadn't set. Uh, but it did do something new and fresh and exciting with the city fight scenes that a lot of other films they're not so much copied but they have took advantage of the fact technology has reached that level that you can do it you know the Avengers ended with a sequence that was basically exactly the same as the end of Dark of the Moon uh, but more because I imagine because ILM worked on both and uh, because Joss Whedon was sitting there going yeah let's steal that uh, but yeah, that, that for me was why Though it was otherwise a very good film, the end of the Avengers was slightly underwhelming because a film had already basically done exactly that. And that's been a problem with a few other films. Uh, Man of Steel, the end of that. Uh, I think a lot, a lot of people, myself included, were feeling fatigue of watching cities get destroyed by things. Uh, possibly the same as effective with New Godzilla. I've not seen that yet, so uh, I'm not sure how well that copes with a problem. But... Uh, Age of Extinction finds a way to do something fresh. You know, we've seen giant robots destroy cities. We've seen big monsters wreck cities. This brings the team together and brings in giant robots riding big monsters as they destroy a city. And it feels exciting and fresh. Uh, I'm not sure where they can take the fifth one uh, on most terms. Uh... But all the stuff with Dinobots is great fun. And I love the fact that when Grimlock comes out, uh, it is basically the thuggish, dim cartoon Grimlock. Uh, it, it's perfect for Michael Bay. You know, cartoon Grimlock is the single most Michael Bay character in all of fiction. Giant, fire-breathing robot dinosaur. If he did not exist, Michael Bay would have created him anyway. Uh, all he needs is a pair of bouncy tits. So that is everything. 
that Mark Bay loves in a film. Um, that's why I never really took uh, Bay's claims over the years that he didn't like Dinobots seriously. I just guess that was an effects thing. Uh, but their moment has come and it does not disappoint. Uh, and it's great that Prime has to challenge Grimlock physically to get him on side. Uh, you know, he doesn't have to give one of his big, long, empowering speeches. It's I uh, whack you out of the head. And that's what gets uh, Grimlock's respect. Uh, to all of that's fun. And I like the fact as well that they just uh, get over the Dinobots. It's relatively easy in that they were already prisoners on lockdown ship. At that point in the film, I was thinking, oh god, they're going to have to go to the Arctic or something like that and dig them up. And it'd be another half hour of looking for Dinobots. But no, they were there. That's a sort of nice little double bluff. Uh, and also uses lockdowns. Uh, Fact that Lockdown captures all these characters and has all these prisoners, it uses it against him. So that's sort of a nice little uh, way of bringing him down. Um, flaws of the film, as I think pretty much everyone have said, it is too long, at uh, two and a half hours. And uh, it's sort of, you can see where it could be cut as well. I mean, the beginning, uh, all, the, all the stuff with uh, the creators of the Transformers coming along and uh, doing Megatron's master plan, uh, the cartoon episode. No, not Megatron's master plan. See, I told you it was an ad hoc video. Uh, key to Vector Sigma. Hopefully nobody noticed that. Uh, they do the key to Vector Sigma to uh, prehistoric Earth, uh, wiping out the dinosaurs. Uh, none of which really has anything to do with the rest of the film, other than being where the metal came from. And uh, considering that uh, the evil rich dick is also melting down dead Transformers from the metal. That could have been the only source of it. There must be a lot of dead Transformers on Earth after Dark of the Moon. So you could have been using their bodies. And as those bodies were running out. Then he makes a deal with Lockdown to get the uh, special spear that will make more of them. And more of the metal. That would have been a bit more streamlined. It meant you could have cut out the entire opening. You could have cut out the crypt of the Arctic. Uh, really all that does is provide a bit of a double bluff over where the Dinobots are going to come from. And whilst that's nice uh, in terms of if you know the Dinobots are going to be in it, and you're, you're thinking, is this what is going to reveal them? If you don't, and you're not particularly bothered, an easy snip. Uh, that, that is a just slightly bloated storytelling. Uh, evil rich dicks to sassy, uh, sardonic female sidekicks could have been turned into one character as well. Uh, the stuff in Chicago could have been cut out, especially as that just repeats the end of Dark of the Moon. Uh, I was half expecting them to be some one character with long going, oh no, not again, at one point. Uh, you could have quite easily just had, after lockdown, captured Prime, had him take him straight to Beijing. Uh, uh, and that's just where the end of the film happens. Uh, yeah, so you'd have the two plots with uh, going on off the ground in Beijing, going on on, on, a, on the ship, with uh, Prime being rescued and the Dinobots being released. It doesn't really need to have two locations of a trip. You, but, but just those trips alone could probably save about 20 minutes of a run time. And there's places where the editing could have been tightened up as well. Uh, for instance, there's a nice little gag. Uh, when... Marky Mark crashes a, crashes a spaceship in somebody's car and they go, do you have insurance? Yeah, cute little Roger Moore Bond era quip that then just goes on for what feels like about an hour where Marky Mark and the driver of the car have a back and forth argument and it, it kills what silly humour there was in the joke and uh, it's completely pointless. So little moments like that trimmed titan would have made a more focused film uh but generally you know very much fun and uh very likeable sets up impressive new directions uh in terms of sort of multi bay foibles surprisingly uh well mainly because the uh the new lead girl is too young uh sexism is very much played down this time uh even marky mark uh, he's commented on it, uh, telling her to cover herself up, which seemed like a bit of a nice meta j joke. 
there is what one odd moment of the ropes where she suddenly turns and took a beat and a coward. Uh, when five minutes earlier she was walking around an alien spaceship being threatened by monsters with a sort of vacant, blank expression as if she's not so much an innocent teenage girl but just a terrible actress. So her suddenly wailing and screaming having to be talked down uh, by Marky Mark and her Irish boyfriend. Uh, that was a bit uncomfortable. Uh, just having a girl want to do that. But uh, generally... You'd have to be really looking to be offended uh, to get offended by this film uh, in terms of sexism or racism. Uh, there was even a nice bit of gag sending up uh, the conventions of films set in China where everybody knows uh, martial arts, uh, sort of ra- random moment taking the piss out of that sort of thing where a bloke in elevators kicks out some kung fu and sort of uh, done very much in a tongue in cheek, uh, ludicrous style uh, that makes you realise they, they know they are uh, this intentionally mocking something rather than succumbing to it uh, Kelsey uh, Grammer has some uh, not a really nice moment uh, at the end of the film as well when he's uh, pissed off to the nines with Marky Mark uh, very good confrontation uh, much better than a similar one uh, between Sh- uh, Shear and uh, the rich dick guy in the uh, last film. Uh, but oddly enough, even though I said it was too long, the film does end oddly suddenly with a lot of things not really wrapped up. I mean, is Marky Mark still wanted by the government? Uh, I mean, unless Kelsey Grammer really was running things by himself, the CIA are still going to want him dead, aren't they? Uh, the rich guy assures Marky Mark, yeah, we're going to rebuild, I'll get you a new house. But surely he's going to be in prison for the rest of his life anyway for destroying half of China's capital city with his death machines. Uh, and that, that's a bit odd. I, I mean, obviously I know why they filmed in China, because of the Chinese market. But I, considering these robots are being built for the US military, I can't imagine uh, the CIA would at any point let them be built in China. Uh, yeah, we were talking earlier in the film about wanting to stop other countries getting hold of Transformers technology. If you don't want Chinese spies stealing your secrets, you don't put them right in the middle of China's capital city. Uh, and it's not really sure what's going to happen to all the Autobots at the end. I mean, uh, if everyone turned against them after Dark of the Moon, the Chinese are going to be really pissed off with them at this, at this stage. Uh, do, do they get hunted down and killed as well? Where Optimus Prime is doing his Christopher Reeve Superman impression around the planet? Uh, but all that sort of small, uh, niggly stuff. And uh, the seeds for the, uh, the next one with Optimus Prime off in space. I really hope that means, you know, I can, live action films, I can understand why they're all set on Earth. Uh, you set too much out in space, you end up doing it all CGI, you might as well just do a cartoon. And I certainly don't have any problem with another cartoon Transformers film, but uh, if you had to do live action, the appeal is having the cars there in the real world surrounded by people. But uh, equally, it'd be fun to have a more substantial sequence set off in space for the next one on another planet. Uh, Star Trek Into Darkness showed what ILM could do with that sort of thing now. Uh, even if it's just a fun little B-plot. It would be really nice if for the next one the MacGuffin is off Earth. Because uh, this is a fourth film in a row where something vitally important to the Transformers has at some point in the distant past, past ended up on Earth or on the went to the moon for the last one. That's still basically the same thing, cosmically speaking. Uh, It's a bit silly now. If you're going to do McGuffey plots, either have them come to Earth during the course of a film, or have them be found somewhere else. So that is what I would make like for the fifth one. Um, but with all the talk of creators and Transformers having been built, it looks like they could be leaning towards Quintessons, uh, which uh, could be interesting. You know, I generally prefer the Primus origin for them, but equally, the Quintesson story has been pretty much totally ignored since uh, the original cartoon. Uh, the best we've had have been sort of a couple of attempts to 
merge them into the primary story. So sort of uh, doing that again by itself, uh, that could be quite impressive. Uh, so generally, yeah, pretty much optimistic for the next one. Uh, very much enjoying the film. Uh, uh, the only other thing I'd say is a shame Glenn Morshower wasn't in it, because I love Glenn Morshower. Even if they didn't want to bring his colonel back for the last two, in fact he's playing different characters in the films, they could have brought him back as a third one. At, uh, the, the triplet of a general and the guy he was in the first movie. They just for to have a different Glenn Morshower show up in every Transformers film from now on. That is what I want from all future ones. But uh, overall, uh, I mean, this was going to be a short video. It's ended up about the same length as all my other ones. Hopefully I've not waffled too much. And uh, check out my website this week uh, on Friday. It will be looking at issue 113 of the British Transformers comic, which uh, introduces Death's Head and uh, has a scene in a pub. And who does it like? Robots in pubs. <laughs>